Hello again, YouTube family. Thank you for joining me on episode six. What of the doc is in? Um, this episode is kind of fun for me because um, I'm going to be talking about my time joining a Black Greek letter organization. As I've mentioned before, right behind my head there, I'm a member of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Um, I I'll tell you a little bit about my journey to Black Greek life. So um, growing up, I never really had a whole lot of understanding of uh, Greek life. Um, I, I have lots of uh, family members who are in the military um, and also several who are Masons who joined generally through like a, like a church affiliation or someone they knew in the church was one and then they kind of got recruited into it. And I always thought that was pretty cool. Um, I love the concept of, you know, all these people getting together with a common goal to do something positive. I love the brotherhood aspect of it all. I think that's very, very cool. Um, so I saw that, but that was all I really knew. As I got older, like into my preteen years, uh, my sister, um, pledged Zeta. Uh, my sister and my cousin, they were, uh, line sisters and they pledged Zeta. And I got to meet a lot of their line sisters and friends that, you know, that they would bring home and stuff like that. And I always just loved that instant bond, like, hey, we're all family. We chill together. We hang out. We do fun stuff. And I was like, that's really awesome. And, and my sister's chapter was particularly, like, active. They would do stuff when it came down to, like, March of Dimes and, you know, stuff for healthy babies. And I just always loved that concept of we are serving our community and, you know, that we're a part of. That was really cool to me. Um, well, again, they were the only ones that I really saw. And then like, I found out that my neighbor was a Delta and my cousin uh, was also a Delta. And I was told that one of my male cousins, who's a bit more distant, uh, is a Sigma. I don't know that to be true. I've never asked or seen him. So anyway, um, I went into freshman year <clears throat> where I just really was kind of stoked and I knew about Sigma because of my my ties in that respect. Also my host mom from high school was a Zeta as well. So I kind of knew about Sigma through that respect. I understood what it was, what they did, that kind of thing. And I knew that very likely I was gonna be a part of it. Um, but when I got to Morehouse for my freshman year of college, what I saw was a lot of activity from all five uh, members, all five um, male fraternities. Anyway, I should just say it, all five fraternities of the Divine Nine. I saw a lot of activity, but then I also saw some non-Divine Nine organizations who are doing a lot of stuff as well. So what I began to do was just kind of look and see who was doing what. Um, and before I finish this story, this is in no way disrespect to any organization that's affiliated with the Divine Nine. This is in no way uh, bashing anybody. I just want to tell you how I got here. Um, <clears throat> so on uh, Morehouse's campus, I remember one of the first Greek events I went to was a neophyte show for the alphas there. And man, those guys put on a show. Like, it was production value. I remember in front of King's Chapel, there were like these really big projectors, and there was like a black and a gold Mercedes, and then a black and a gold motorcycle that like rolled in before them. And it was just, it was everything that anybody Greek would probably be like, that's an awesome neophyte show, good stuff. Um, I watched it, and I was really, really intrigued. And I was like, man, they have a lot of members here. Very cool. You know, a lot of times you hear like, oh, the Martin Luther King was an alpha, or Martin Luther King is, was, however you want to word it, an alpha. And they go through all of that stuff. And I was like, okay, very, very cool. So I also just took time to begin to kind of formulate my own opinions, get away from the stereotypes, try and figure out who was who and what was what. Um... But also, I wanted to see where my personality would fit in with all of these organizations. I, you know, as I talked earlier, I'm a fairly quiet person. 
I, I work hard. People who know me, I shoot marbles with them. You know, we can have a good time, joke, laugh, whatever, but I'm not like super rowdy. I can be, but I try not to be most of the time. Um, so I knew certain things were out. Omegas, these there there were large numbers. Brothers do great work, but I'm like, you're not gonna see me out, out hopping and barking. Not my thing. Um, alphas, there were lots of them, and they wore suits like all the time. But I was just like, that's if for me it felt pretentious because it wasn't organic to who I was. Um, Kappas, if I never told, if I haven't told y'all this yet, it'll come later. But I wasn't the one who was like caught up in my looks. So it felt like that's what they all did. And again, no disrespect to these brothers because they did a lot more than that. But I have to go by what I was seeing on campus at the time. Um, I would have thought they were really cool, but I never saw a lot of them. I'd see maybe one or two here or there, but I rarely saw like a, a huge mass of them at one time. Um, the Sigmas really took me even then because I saw how many of them there were, how tight they all seemed to be, and the amount of work that they were doing for the community. It really, really drew me in. Well, the after my freshman year at Morehouse, um, and I'm going to go into this in the video too, but I just did not enjoy Morehouse. Um, PWIs versus HBCUs. That's a, that's a topic for itself, but there were a lot of things going on in administration, and I've heard that since that time, it's gotten a lot better with new administration, new president, new everything, um, but back at, back then, I just couldn't. I mean, I like things to come in, in with some level of timeliness, and when you're waiting all semester for something that should have gotten to you like week three, four, it's like, that's okay, I'm good. Um, and, and I was there on scholarship and ultimately I was just like, that's okay. Um, I ended up transferring from there to the university of New Orleans. I had a scholarship there that was held from my, you know, you know, most scholarships you get them right after high school. If you write the letter saying, Hey, I'm going to de decline it. They'll hold it for a year. It provided your grades are still good. So my grades were fine. Everything was cool. And I decided to transfer to U, uh, UNO and I didn't really look at the chapters there so much as I just knew in my head I wanted to be a Sigma. I had the credits already and um, the GPA was great. So I was like, okay, let's go to the, the rush. And I met the guys that would potentially become my four line brothers. I was so disappointed because I just knew I was going to be an anchor on my line. And then I met my, my, my anchor and this dude is like, ah, damn near seven feet tall. Uh, big ups to him. Love, love that guy. Uh, and the thing about it was I joined a chapter that to some extent was splintered because it was right after Hurricane Katrina. A lot of people had been displaced, so people were all over the place. And so it was kind of like you're picking up uh, with the pieces that you have and then moving forward. So people were in positions that they weren't really accustomed to. People, everybody was just trying to get back into some sense of normalcy. So. Um, Went into the process, just kind of open-minded, like, hey, whatever, it is what it is. My sister was like, hey, this is what you're going to deal with. Just be mindful. Cool beans. So um, I'm not going to go into too much detail, mainly for legal reasons, uh, but uh, I went through membership intake, which is fun. Um, and of course, I love when people out the box, one of my LBs asked, are we going to get hit? And they said, of course not, because, you know, Phi Beta Sigma is a non-hazing organization. We do membership intake. And, um, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's jump uh, ahead, okay? Let's jump ahead. Uh, harassment, I, I mean, I mean, our, our intake process is over, and uh, we're we're now in, and we're we're fully in. Everything's cool. Uh, I believe it was April second, two thousand six, at three o four a.m. Uh, we we wrapped everything up. Uh, so we're in. Everything's Gucci. We we're we're cool, you know. Um. Sorry, April 6th. Uh, but in all of this, what I'm finding is 
I'm really, really close to my four line brothers, but I don't ter feel terribly close to the rest of the chapter. <laughs> I don't feel terribly close to all the other people who were there at harassment, I mean, intake. So now what? You know, and I'm not a partier. You won't see me, uh, well, you didn't really see me at parties. I was more like, hey, let's have business meetings, let's do this. But what I had to do was find where I fit. My fit was social action chairman because all I wanted to do was figure out how we could mobilize our resources to help others. And we did that. I mean, everything from the mayor's boo at the zoo, volunteering for that, AIDS walk, cancer walk, um, raising money for just different things. You name it, we tried it because it just felt right. Like, whatever we can do to help, let's try that. The one thing that really frustrated me about the organization was, again, it was like the politics, the local politics of the organization become too much. I'm seeing a lot of videos that people are putting out and they're like, oh, this is, you know, satanic. It's a cult. It's, you know, a gang. I don't believe that. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't. I may not be the most active person in Sigma, but I've never felt that I joined a gang. And the fact is, if there are brothers who are treating it as such, they may want to rethink what they joined and why. I mean, our, our, our tenants are Brotherhood, Scholarship, and Service. Nowhere in there is it, we're going to be a gang, you know, we're going to join, it's going to be a gang fight. We're going out in the street with bats and, and, and clubs and such. That's not us. And the one time that we had a, a bit of a kerfuffle that took place between ourselves and another organization, that was squashed in a matter of minutes, um, not only by the members of the chapter, but the members of our graduate chapter who were really not having it. So... I want to just say that Black Greek life is something that I think it it enhanced my college experience inevitably and in a lot of positive ways. But if you asked me to do all of that over again, I can't lie to you and say I'd just jump on board and be like, yeah, let's do it. Um, I feel like the people that I'm closest to, I probably would have been close to anyway. It, because it's them. It's not our common affiliation. It's that person that I think is real cool and mellow and I shoot marbles with. Um, but LBs and I, I, I love them all. I, I, I don't talk to everybody every five minutes by any means, but I love them all. Um, my, my fans, even from different schools during that time, man, most of us are in some type of contact. Again, we're not, we don't shoot marbles, but we cool. Um, for people out there who are thinking about joining, the one thing I'll say is this. Look at the members of the chapter and ask yourself, do they hold the same values that you do? Are they about getting work done? Are they about putting something on with some letters and, and some jackets and things and, and, and going out and dancing? Because I'm sorry, you could just join a dance troupe and save yourself time and money. Um... The other thing about this is, and, and I know some people will not be happy with me for saying this, but I'm saying it anyway because it's my space. Um, ultimately, the people who you see all the time in the letters and they got on, you know, a, 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 a letterman jacket over a t-shirt with a lanyard and, you know, the shoes, those are usually the people who are kind of the mascots. These people don't do a whole lot other than draw attention to the organization. It's the people who are behind the scenes that really get the work done. Half the time, you may not even know that they belong to the organization because they're doing the work. They're getting the work done. That's just how this works. And I feel like that's with anything, any type of group or organization. You have people who are really good promoters because they, they go, they're going to be out and about. They're going to be seen in letters. Great. But you also have people that's actually the ones who are anchoring everything down and making sure that everything should be what it, that everything is what it should be. Okay. Um, that is my spiel on being a member of a black Greek letter organization. Um, again, I want to say it is January. I want to congratulate and uh, give kudos to everyone who has a Founders Day this month um, and throughout the year. Don't, don't let this month just be the only one. Congrats to everyone who has anything happening throughout this year. Congrats to you all. I hope that we all continue to live out our missions and um, 
continue the vision that our founder set forth. All right. Thank you all. Love yourselves. Love somebody else. We'll all be better for it.